when you talk about anterior knee pain, a lot of people can think they have a tendinopathy, whereas they actually have patellofemoral pain. There's a lot of other things going on, but patellofemoral pain seems to be a thing that's pretty common. So how can you figure out if you have it and what should you do about it? There was this 2019 paper called patellofemoral pain. It was a clinical practical guideline by Richard Willey and others where they pretty much covered everything in the research about patellofemoral pain. So first of all, distinguishing patellofemoral pain is actually pretty simple. They said use reproduction of retropatellar or peripatellar pain during squatting as a diagnostic test for patellofemoral pain. You can also perform other activities that load the patellofemoral joint in a flex position, like walking up and down stairs, uh, maybe running, running downhill especially, and prolonged sitting can also cause pain. So if those symptoms line up with your pain, you might have patellofemoral pain. The next step is to look at what is potentially causing the patellofemoral pain and what can you do to solve it. If you talk to anyone else about patellofemoral pain, they'll talk about these very vague terms like the hip and the foot matter, biomechanics matters, but that's not very helpful. This list of the four subcategories puts reasons to why someone has patellofemoral pain and attaches some deficits that they might have that they need to address to solve their patellofemoral pain. The first subcategory was overuse overload without other impairment. They said the patient presents with a history suggesting an increase in magnitude and or frequency of patellofemoral joint loading at a rate that surpasses the ability of his or her patellofemoral joint tissues to recover. I experienced this for myself in the fall of 2021. I went to Indianapolis, met up with my friend Justin Ochoa. I did front squats and vertical jump testing. That evening, I did max deadlifts with my friend Casey Zink. The next day, did a dunk session with Joey Garris. The following day, played basketball with Justin Ochoa for a few hours. And after all of that overload on my patellofemoral joint, for the next week or two, I couldn't do squatting, walking up and down stairs, jogging. I couldn't do any of that without pretty bad patellofemoral joint pain. Uh, it just went away. I just gave it some rest and the tissues were able to recover, but that was a case of acute overload causing the patellofemoral joint pain because I don't think I had any other deficits present. The next subcategory is muscle performance deficits. They said the patient presents with lower extremity muscle performance deficits in the hip and quadriceps. So this is pretty simple. For this subcategory of people with patellofemoral pain, they just have a weak lower body, specifically the hip and the quadriceps. So they can get on strength training and they might see benefits to their pain. The third subcategory of people is movement coordination deficits. They said the patient presents with excessive or poorly controlled knee valgus during a dynamic task, but not necessarily due to weakness of the lower extremity musculature. So with this subcategory of people, they might just have their knees diving inwards excessively, which causes a weird stress on the patellofemoral joint, and that could potentially lead to pain. So for them, they might have to do some movement retraining to get rid of that excessive diving in of their knees. The fourth and final subcategory is mobility impairments. They said the patient presents with higher than normal foot mobility and or flexibility deficits of one or more of the following structures, hamstrings, quadriceps, gastrocnemius, soleus, lateral retinaculum, or iliotibial band. If you look at hypermobility or having too much mobility, they see this pretty much only in the foot. In one study, they see people with patellofemoral pain have a more pronated foot. In another study, they see beneficial effects to using a foot orthotic in people with patellofemoral pain. I'm not necessarily a believer in either looking at static foot posture or giving someone foot orthotics, but maybe what this means, having hypermobility in the foot, is they're not getting too much support from their foot, and maybe that can be developed through training of getting foot contacts. Maybe, maybe not. Or if you look at hypomobility or not having enough mobility, it seems like they used mobility and flexibility interchangeably. They looked at people in one study with and without patellofemoral pain, and they saw more tightness in all of these muscles with these different tests of the hamstring, the gastrocnemius, the soleus, the iliotibial band, the quadriceps, and the lateral retinaculum, which was tested by a patellar tilt test. The reasoning behind this is maybe if those structures are more tight, they're leading to more stress on the patellofemoral joint. So if we look at all of these subcategories, overuse, overload, muscle performance deficits, movement coordination deficits, and mobility impairments, maybe you have one of them. Maybe you have a mix of all of them. 
it really tells you that you should use good practices in your training to address all of your deficits while also not doing too much load for what your current capacity is. So hopefully this has been helpful and try it out. Enjoy.